you know how those medical doctors are. They always just, you know, over-prescribe medicine so that they can fill their fat wallets with even more money. And instead of going to a doctor, you should just use what works for me. It's, it's called, uh, placebo. Our world is full of alternative treatments for medical problems, and what classifies an alternative treatment as being alternative is generally the fact that it has not been scientifically demonstrated to be effective. So there's some element of like pseudoscience going on here, where some of these drugs, they may appear to be effective. Sometimes they might actually be effective, but it's really hard in most cases to tell if the effectiveness of that alternative treatment comes from the actual treatment itself or just your belief in the effectiveness of the treatment. So now what I'm talking about is the placebo effect. So the placebo effect just refers to the fact that simply believing that you're receiving some kind of effective treatment will cause you to feel better, to feel like the disorder or the disease is going away. Now, of course, placebo effects have their limits, but when it comes to more common kinds of mundane things like headaches, colds, things like that, placebo effects can have, you know, profound influence on your body state and emotional state and so on. So now I'd just like to talk to you about some of the most popular alternative treatments. Perhaps the most popular throughout history and all over the world would be herbalism. So this, sometimes called traditional medicine or herbal, you know, ther therapies and things like that. This is when we use various kinds of plants and sometimes minerals for med medicinal purposes. Now, it makes a lot of sense that people would use plants and, you know, minerals and other things because this is actually what modern medicine came from. So modern medicine used to be herbalism, basically. The only real difference now is that modern medicine is always scientifically demonstrated to be effective before it's put out on the market. But this is not ever really the case with herbal treatments. But even though they're not scientifically demonstrated, that doesn't necessarily mean that they're ineffective. Like I said, there's, you know, herbalism is very similar in many ways to modern medicine, so some herbal th treatments will show some signs of effectiveness, but most probably not so much. Something that appears very similar to herbalism, but is in reality completely different, are homeopathic treatments. So homeopathy is a kind of medicine that was created by a guy by the name of Samuel Hahnemann. And it's, it looks like medicine, you know, it usually comes in pill form. And the thing that makes it so bizarre is, well, there's a few things, but one of the primary things that makes it so such a bizarre kind of treatment is that it's based on the doctrine of like cures like. So here's the idea. If you, if you have a headache, you should treat that by taking a drug that causes a headache. If you are having sleep problems, you should take a drug that causes you to stay awake, and so on. So you, you're, you're taking a substance, you're putting a substance into your body that will cause the very same problem that you're having, and somehow this is going to help you. Like, that doesn't make any kind of logical sense, but that's the first and most important doctrine of homeopathy. So if that doesn't sound bizarre enough, it gets even worse. The second uh, big, big idea of homeopathy is that you have to dilute the substance as much as possible, and the more dilute, the more powerful. So here's what I mean. If, you're tr if you buy a homeopathic sleeping aid, like something that will help you get to sleep, the primary ingredient, the active ingredient, will be caffeine. You know, that's ridiculous, but whatever. That's not what we're talking about now. What we're talking about now is that caffeine is actually so dilute that you are unlikely 
to find even a single molecule of caffeine in the treatment. So it, the caffeine might not even be there. Like, it's that dilute. It's incredibly dilute. It's ridiculous. So not only do they want to give you a drug that will cause your problem, but they also don't give you the drug. It's, I, I could go on and on about how ridiculous this is, but I think uh, James Randi would be much better at explaining what, how ridiculous homeopathy is. And he has gone to great lengths at explaining the silliness of this treatment. So, but even though it is clearly so incredibly silly, it's still extremely popular throughout the USA and much of the world. So if you'd like to see James Randi explain more about homeopathy, just check out the links in the comments. Another one uh, that's pretty popular is chiropractic. Now, you might think, oh, chiropractic, that's not an alternative treatment. That actually does show effectiveness. Well, the question is, what does it show effectiveness for? Because chiropractic, you know, as the practice, the whole idea of chiropractic is to improve your general health by focusing on problems in the musculoskeletal system. So what I'm saying is, the central idea of chiropractic is that you can solve most health problems by correcting what are called subluxations. And a subluxation is just like a misalignment of the spinal cord. So if you have the sniffles, we should realign your spinal cord. If you have leg pain, realign the spinal cord. It's like everything can be traced back to the spinal cord. And while that does have some logic to it, it's clearly not going to help most problems. I mean, if you have a back problem, if you have a spinal problem, great. That's what chiropractic is very effective at. But it's not going to help these kind of general health issues, which is what, you know, the basic idea of chiropractic is all about. Something kind of similar to chiropractic would be acupuncture. So acupuncture tends to focus on the spine, but not, not, not entirely. Acupuncture is more kind of widespread uh, body, you know, treatment where you are going to be stimulating specific points of the body. Like sometimes you'll focus on the spine or the hands or the feet or the face or whatever. But you're stimulating specific points of the skin. Now that stimul stimulation is most traditionally thought of as being like little needles. And it can be needles or it can be, you know, heat or pressure or just some other kind of stimulus. If you've ever heard of cupping, that's when you put, you know, these glass cups on the person's back or whatever, and then you heat the cups to produce pressure to suck on the skin, like it produces a lot of hickeys all over the body. If that sounds gross and painful, well, it is. And the whole idea is that you're, like, sucking out the toxins or something. Like, people take this stuff very seriously, but if you really look at it and if you really talk about it and try to understand it, it does start to seem a bit silly that, you know, cupping a person is going to somehow treat them, treat their general health issues. But even though, you know, acupuncture doesn't seem terribly logical for the most sense, it has been used to try to treat numerous illnesses. Like, we've tested the effectiveness of acupuncture scientifically to see if it can do all the different things that acupuncturists claim it can do. Like people have claimed that it can help with the headaches, it can help with cancer, it can help with depression, fertility, childbirth, nausea, vomiting, strokes, ADHD, and the list goes on and on. So all these cl claims have been made by acupuncturists. Every single one of them has been tested and no scientific evidence has been found. Now one that just on its face seems very clearly false would be faith healing. So ritualistic practices that are conducted in the attempt to cure physical problems or mental problems. It's quite literally you're just asking you know a spiritual entity like you're just asking God to fix your broken spine or something like this. So clearly we can't really test this with science. Uh, we, we've tried to test it, we've done some scientific research on people who claim to be faith healers, but we haven't really found that they have any real effectiveness. In fact, 
something that's kind of ironic, well, I suppose it's not very ironic, but something that's pretty funny is that that's not very funny either. Something that's pretty interesting is that a lot of faith healers are actually have a higher rate of mortality. So being a faith healer means that you're probably going to die younger than other people. So it's probably in your best interest to not expect a higher being to solve your problems for you, even if you ask very nicely. Now, James Randi has gone to great length to expose people who do this kind of fraud, faith healing fraudulently, like people who are just doing it to make money. So I have a link in the comments down below of this, uh, uh, him exposing this guy, Peter Popoff, who was a very famous faith healer, and he still kind of is to a certain extent, but he was clearly just doing it to extort money. Now, something that's not too far removed from faith healing would be psychic surgery, which is the act of removing organs or other matter from the body using the bare hands. So if this sounds barbaric, if it sounds disturbing, don't worry, it's not real. It's, it's a fake, it's a show, it's an illusion. These f psychic surgeons, they aren't actually penetrating the skin. They're not actually performing surgery. It's a total hoax, and it has been denounced as a total hoax by the U.S. Federal Trade Commission. So you're not going to find this anywhere in our country. Well, if you do, it's going to be like in a dark alley somewhere in a like poor area or something like that. But psychic surgery is still relatively popular in many world, in many places around the world. It, it originated in spiritualist communities in the Philippines and Brazil, and a lot of people would actually go there to get this kind of you know treatment performed on them, because they strongly believed, <coughs> for whatever reason, that it was better, it was more effective at treating their problems than you know modern medicine. So I have a link in the comments of James Randi demonstrating what psychic surgery looks like. And remember, if you watch it, it's just an illusion. There's no actual surgery happening here. So when it comes to the United States, we definitely have a lot of different kinds of, you know, treatments available. Most of these treatments, well, I shouldn't say most, many of these treatments have been, you know, validated as effective by, you know, scientific communities in our country. But the thing that I want to be very clear about before I move on is that <clears throat> sometimes it's hard to tell the difference. Sometimes it's very hard to tell the difference between a scientifically validated treatment and an alternative treatment. So whenever it comes to, you know, seeking help for your medical problem, you should always ask, um, or always try to look into more details about whether or not this treatment has been demonstrated to show any effectiveness whatsoever, or is it just pseudoscience? Is it just make-believe? You know, is it, all, is it all based on anecdotal evidence, or is there actually some truth to what this, you know, treatment claims it can do? Now, you might wonder, like, why do we l allow this kind of stuff in our country? Why are these alternative treatments so prevalent? You, you can go to any pharmacy and find tons and tons of homeopathic treatments and herbal remedies and things like that. So they're, they're everywhere. Uh, you can get degrees in acupuncture at many colleges. You can learn and, you know, become a professional in various alternative therapies, you know, right here in this country right here in this state or maybe even this city. So there's definitely uh, a huge prevalence. And the primary reason, historically, that these alternative therapies are so popular is because they're cheaper. So modern medicine is expensive, but it's much cheaper to, for example, just poke yourself with a bunch of needles or have somebody align your spinal column or something like that. It just doesn't cost as much. So when you look at people from poorer regions around the world, what you tend to see is that they re rely almost entirely on alternative therapies, like herbalism and faith healing. Like faith healing is perhaps the cheapest kind of alternative therapy out there because you literally just ask a spiritual entity to solve the problem for you. Like you don't really do anything. 
so this is why we tend to you know associate like rural like poor areas in China with alternative treatments because this is where these kinds of treatments are going to be very popular in these really poor areas where people's education rates aren't so great. But another major reason why alternative therapies are so popular is something I already kind of mentioned, and that is they tend to be relatively spiritual or cultural in nature. So sometimes these therapies, these treatments, are part of their tradition, part of their heritage, you know, like the, the, it's something that their parents did with them, they will do with their children, and then their children will pass it on to their children, and so on. So it just kind of becomes a family tradition. Like, they might not even really believe in it that much. They might not really put much thought into it. It's just kind of like an automatic thing. Like, my parents did it to me, so I should do it to my kids. And when you don't think about these things, when you just kind of go with tradition, you might actually be doing some harm because a lot of these alternative therapies can be dangerous if not deadly. The most serious consequence that can occur from you know seeking alternative treatments is that you're obviously not going to scientifically validated treatments first. Like, like let's say you have a medical problem. Instead of going straight to the doctor, you instead pursue one or more alternative therapies. You are wasting time. You are putting yourself at higher risk. If you have a serious medical condition, it's only going to get worse and worse and worse if you don't receive proper treatment. So that kind of time delay can be a very serious issue. In some cases, it can be deadly. Like if, if you spend months just expecting some, you know, pill, like some kind of herbal thing to work for you, and it just doesn't seem to be showing any effectiveness, well, all that time that you're suffering, you could have actually recovered if you went to an actual doctor in a hospital. Another common problem, another major you know, problem with alternative therapies in terms of how they can be dangerous, is that if they do have any effects, sometimes those, those effects can actually do the opposite of what you want. So they can interfere with actual medicine, or they can even make the condition worse. So my, my whole point, the thing that I'm really trying to make clear, and I really want you guys to understand, is that if you have any kind of health concern, if you have any kind of, even if it's a mundane health problem, when you're looking for a treatment for that problem, always ask or always look for evidence of its effectiveness. If you don't find any evidence from the guy you're talking to, or if you don't see any evidence on the bottle, Google it. You know, try to figure out whether or not the science supports the claims that this treatment is trying to make. What you might find in many cases is it just doesn't. <laughs>